Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back. My name is Crystal and in this video I am just going to be taking some solid little maple end tables and making them look pretty again and updating them and bring them back to life. These little tables originally had a shelf on the top of them. One of the shelves was missing on one of the end tables so to match them up we just removed both of the little shelves. This was very fairly simple. It just took a few screws and a little bit of elbow grease to pull out the spindle. Some of the spindles did break along the way, but I'm just going to be filling those holes anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I always uh, prep my pieces by sanding, so I'll give everything a quick scuff if I'm just painting it. On the top of these, I wanted to sand them completely down to the bare wood. My whole plan is to bleach them and do like a paint wash on them just to lighten the wood. I am using an 80 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander. Uh, everything comes off pretty, pretty quickly with my orbital sander. When I am done using my orbital sander, I always go back and hand sand any little parts that I could not get to with my orbital sander. Sometimes I can't get into like the little cracks and crevices. So I just scuff everything up to just make sure I have maximum adhesion for my paint. Folding my sandpaper in half, it makes it easier to get into those really teeny tiny cracks and crevices. We buy a lot of things at auctions, and this these set of end tables was just one of the things we bought at an auction. And usually when you buy stuff at auctions, you get a lot of additional little surprises with things that you purchase. So these end tables were not emptied out prior to the auction, and I am just going through and checking out all the things that were left behind that... I guess nobody wanted, but yeah, there was like a little old, um, I don't even know what, like a, a Palm Pilot type thing. There were baseball and basketball cards. There was like some kind of artist tape, which I will totally use that. Uh, there was like a little travel pack for Turkish Air, um, a whole bunch of skateboarding stickers, and a brand new like box of like 12 decks of cards. So sometimes you find some really cool stuff inside of things when you buy them from auction. And I we purchased these two tables for $3 total. So we get a great deal and then you know we get a whole bunch of freebies on top of it. And then of course I always have to use my best friend every time I'm filling holes. I love this wood bundle stuff. It is like the best stuff. I swear this is my favorite all-time wood filler. It's super quick I'm an imp to dry. I'm an impatient person. It takes like 15 minutes to dry and then you can sand and move on with your project. It's like the greatest thing ever. Just take your orbital sander and sand it off and it's extremely hard and durable and the only thing is, is I've noticed it is not stainable. It might claim to be stainable, but it's not stainable. It, can, it will not match your wood if you are trying to um, achieve that. So just keep that in mind. If you're filling holes for like new drawer pulls or something like that, and you are going to leave that hole that you fill exposed, that it is going to stand out like a sore thumb if you plan on staining it. When you are done sanding, you need to make sure you clean everything really well. In this video, I'm using um, Amy Howard brand Clean Slate product, which is okay. Um, I don't love it. Uh, will I buy it again? No, I probably won't, but I have it and I'm going to use it. But soap and water is just as fine as any other product that you can find. You basically just want to make sure you get everything clean so you can ensure proper adhesion of your paint and you don't get like any debris stuck in your paint and like clumps and stuff like that. I am bleaching these 
And I've done this a bunch of times, typically with like maple or really any sort of wood, you are going to get like a orangish, orangish hue um, or tinge if you are staining or, you know, um, just applying a top coat if you just want a, a raw color wood. So um, by bleaching it, it just basically lightens down that tone um, and just kind of changes it so that way it gives you more of a lighter base to apply your stain or your um, sealant or whatever it is you want to put on top of it. I did several coats of bleach on this. I just used a chip brush. I made sure everything was dry before I did my second or third um, application of bleach. Uh, you can totally tell the difference in the color just by watching it and as it dries it starts to change. So um, it definitely totally works and I did not dilute my bleach. I just straight up put my bleach on. When you are done bleaching you need to neutralize the bleach and just wash the bleach off with a 50-50 vinegar and water mixture. Just spray it on, let it dry, wipe it off, whatever. And so something that was bothering me was one of the holes where the spindles came off, one of the spindles had broken off. So I just it was bothering me. So I just went in with a large drill bit and I drilled out where the spindle had broke and then I refilled it. I should have had just done this in the first place, but I thought it was going to be fine, but I changed my mind. So with paint washing, you can either A, water down your paint, B, you can just spray water on your piece that you are working on, which is basically what I did here. I just sprayed down my surface and then I took a little bit of paint on my paintbrush and just spread it out. If it was too thick, I sprayed some water and spread it out thinner and it just kind of lightened everything up even, even more so than it already was from the bleach. I am using a color called Peace by Paint Couture to do my wash. You can do it in any t with any type of paint or with any color of paint. Paint Couture is a acrylic resin based paint, but you can use chalk paint, you can use latex paint. I have used them all and they all work. I kind of jumped around here a little bit on my video clips. But for the paint, I used a paint couture color called Misty Fjord. And it's sort of like a very pale green, like a misty green, kind of like the name. And it's super pretty. And I'm really just loving this paint couture paint. I um, just recently tried it, and I think this is the per third project I have used it on and I really love it. It's not super thick. It's not super thin. It's really easy to work with. Um, it sort of reminds me of a latex paint. It is self-leveling so there are minimal brush strokes and it's just so buttery smooth and I, I really like this paint. I'm going to do a review video on it soon to talk about probably how much I like it. For my sealants, I'm using a Rust-Oleum Chalked Matte Sealer, and um, it says not to use a sponge, but guess what? I'm doing it. I'm using a sponge. This is the easiest way to put this stuff on, I think, without um, making it streaky or anything like that, and it gets really good in the corners and the cracks. You just do need to watch out for, like, build up and just... Wipe it off with your sponge before it has a chance to dry. And it goes on really easy. Um, I like the way it gives the paint um, like, a, like a little bit of a matte satin um, sheen to it. It says it's a matte finish, but I personally think it's like in between a matte and a satin. It's a little bit shiny. It's not super... Um, flat looking. 
I just did one coat of this on my paint and then I did like three coats on the top. And then I took some peel and stick wallpaper and I lined the drawers with it. The drawers were actually, or I don't even know what compartment, it's not technically a drawer, I guess this little cubby, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, were, they were in good condition, but I just wanted to make it look a little bit prettier. So I added this peel and stick wallpaper. Uh, there are like a grid pattern on the back, so it's usually pretty easy to get your measurements correct. I did have a little bit of uh, t trimming to do. I just used an X-Acto blade and trimmed it off, and it cuts really easy and all that. And I did also spray paint the hinges in an antique gold, and I didn't get any footage of that. But other than that, that's all it, you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This was a pretty easy flip. Nothing really crazy uh, that I did. Just painted it and bleached it. So thanks, y'all, again. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, and I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.